Everybody. Welcome to Groups. We're excited to be with you today, uh, working in through uh, part two of our series, Short and Sweet. Uh, we talked this week about the, we used the, the sword and the stone, which first of all, how awesome is that? So good. Like I want a bad guy to come in and like go full on Black Knight and just whooting, but apparently you can't hit people with swords anymore. That'd be awesome. Back in the day, like in the ancient church, I'm sure that if you were like a bishop, you could hit somebody with a sword. I don't think you can anymore. Apparently, it's a felony. This week uh, in worship, what we talked about was really the swords, right? The, the, the swords, as it says in Hebrews, the word of God is living, it's active, it's sharper than any two-edged sword dividing soul and uh, body. Um, soul and spirit, forgive me, it divides joint and marrow, right? It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And we have these questions, am I saved? Does God love me? Do I love God? Um, am I filled with the Holy Spirit? And really what we look through, we let the word of God be like a sword and cut through our questions and reveal the truth of God and the promises in that. And really the last line of, um, the last kind of, word of the teaching this past week was be comforted. Be comforted in the love of God. Be comforted in the purposes of God, in the filling of his Holy Spirit and the purposes he has in your life. Don't listen to the voice of the one who condemns you, who says you're worthless, you're no good, nobody ever loved you. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Uh, that's, That's condemnation. Conviction is the Holy Spirit saying, hey, that relationship you need to make right that that thing you did wrong, you need to you need to make restitution and connect. You need to repent and turn towards me. So, my friends, if you love Jesus Christ, the hundred percent God, hundred percent man, revealed person of Jesus Christ, His life, death, resurrection, there is hope, redemption, and purpose for you. And that is the truth of Scripture proclaimed in this place. And, um, and it's the truth offered to you. So as we go in today, I'm excited for the conversations you're about to have in groups. And we're going to start first with kids' questions because kids are nicer to me than adults are. So they get to go first. Kids never say to me, I didn't like that sermon, Pastor Eric, or you look like you've put on weight, Pastor Eric. Actually, some have said that to me. <laughs> some have made that comment. So that's a little hurtful, but I still love them. And um, yeah. Anyways, how did we get there? I had such a good segue going, and not the two-wheeled vehicle, Broncos segue, but um, so Matt Kuman and his bride are doing a segue tour in Boyne Mountain. So here's the requirement of this church for you to remain employed here. I need you to get a saw blade helmet, one of those spiked saw blade helmets, and driving gloves. Driving gloves. And I need Jalyn to take a video. And I want you to be like playing like background music. Like, do you remember Knight Rider? Yeah. Remember that show with the car, whoa, whoa, you know, Kit and David Hasselhoff, the Hoff. You have to give us a video and we'll put it on the next group's video. Is that fair, Kyle? <laughs> what? Oh, you nodded the camera? I can't see. It's so far away. We got a better camera. Unfortunately, you can see how old I really look. Like, God, is he like 100 all of a sudden? Well, guess what? I'm under a lot of stress. Kids, I'm sorry you had to see that. We're going to get to kids' questions. But next week, you get to see uh, Matt on a Segway off-roading with action music. I want it made in iMovies, and I want it good. Do you agree to this? I'll do my <laughs> yes. Oh, if you get away with your wife for a nice weekend, we punish you by having an off-roading Segway. You told me you're taking Segways. Kids, first question. Here we go. This is it. Let's read this together. 1 John 4, 19 to 21, we love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. Whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he's given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. So in the Bible, 
we just a uh, Bible verse we just read. John explains how we're supposed to love our brother and sister. He doesn't just mean the brothers and sisters you have living in your home. He's talking about your brothers and sisters in Christ, the the people you share the church with, the people that um, God loves who maybe aren't here yet, who He wants to bring home here. This is anyone who is a child of God, which means we're supposed to show love to everyone around us. Here's the hard question, kids. Is there anyone in your life you have a hard time showing love or kindness to? By the way, I know the answer to this, so you have to be honest. Talk about it real quick. Our views of people can change when we see them as brothers and sisters in Christ. So, how are you going to show love to someone this week? This can be at your house, your school, maybe a friend's house, on a sports team. Be creative in the ways you choose to show the love of Christ to your brothers and sisters in Christ. So maybe it's a little note just dropped in someone's locker. Maybe, maybe it's just complimenting someone that they look nice today or they, did, they worked hard in a sport and you say, hey, really good job. I saw how hard you were working. How are you going to show the love of Christ today to one of your brothers or sisters in Christ? All right, children. Children. All right, kids. Next week, uh, you get to see Matt. One, let's add one thing to it. I need this by show of hands. How many of you want Matt to be wearing shorter than normal shorts? Anybody? Oh, they all raised their hand. I could see it in the camera. No, that's why we have to do Matt's legs are literally that big around. This is going to be perfect. Matt's wearing short shorts. Okay, kids. This, this is not nice, what we're doing to Matt. Do you want us to change the rules? No, nope, Matt said, no, we don't have to change it. He wants to do it. You, yeah. All right, come back next week. You got to make sure you see the Matt off-roading on a Segway in shorts. Yes. This is going to be the greatest week of church ever. Have a great week, kids. I hope you are able to show the love of Christ to those around you. Dun, 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 dun. Beep, 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 beep. All right, adults, here we go. Question number one. What does it mean for you to obey God? What things does he command you to be doing in your everyday ordinary life? Number two, question number two. Is there something in your life that you have asked forgiveness for, but you keep dwelling on it? And how do you let those things go and trust that God has forgiven you. Check out and read together 1 John 5, 2 to 5 as you answer. One John 4 explains this. Whoever claims to love God yet hates someone is a liar. And this statement can be a hard pill to swallow. But here's the reality. It seems so much easier to dwell on the anger we have for someone who has done us wrong, and yet we're called higher than that. How can we view people around us as children of God and not enemies who have wronged us in some way? That's a tough question. How can we view, view people around us as children of God rather than in, enemies, people who have wronged us? Take some time, discuss that. I know your personal stories and mine are full of people who maybe have wronged us, but how do we, how do we view them as children of God? I like that question. There is a section if you want to go further in and really discuss some other things called digging deeper. So if you have the opportunity as a group, go ahead and take some time, work on those. But I hope you have a great night in groups or day if you meet in the groups, if you're a day group. Do we have any day groups, I wonder? Message me if you're a day group. But anyways, have a great time working through this together, growing in Christ, growing in your love of the Word of God and His community. Grace, peace, and God's best to you as you step forward in obedience.
All right, you ready, Kyle? Tell me when you're ready. Sometimes you just want the, you're getting a little bit like a real camera crew. We're rolling. We hate the talent. You have full access to craft services just like we do. So don't act like you're living the tough life. You had more chili than I did. Admit it. He didn't admit it. He's just like behind his camera like, is he nodding the camera? All right. So we want to share a little bit of an update with you in the groups about 100% All In. Now, here's what I know. We, well, let me do this before I get into that. We had approximately 110 to 120 giving units. That's how many envelopes came in. Now, within those envelopes, there were some that, like, all the family put their gifts and stuff in. So it was a little bit um, inflated over that. But make no mistake that we're calling everyone 100% all in. And I'm talking you to you groups right now. Like, you too, we, you're called into this. It's still going because I still feel like the church as a whole is, start, is supposed to participate in some small or large way, whatever the Lord leads in. But um, So we're still going to have these out this coming Sunday. But I wanted to give you some of the breakdown of what came in and just the excitement around it. It was really, really cool. So uh, this week we deposited a hundred and thirteen thousand dollars, which is just a lot of money. I was really like excited by that. Um, that came in in cash and one-time gifts. Um, we also had three hundred, approximately three hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars pledged towards the build, which. Again, that is amazing. So we're right around that $445,000 mark for how much came in and how much was pledged. Um, and the giving units, like I said, was 110 to 120, which I know this. In our groups, we have just around 500 people doing groups in the Foundry Church, which is an incredible number. But I, here's what I want to challenge you on. You're all in in the weekly rhythm, but we also need you to be all in with this. And don't hesitate to say, you know what, the Lord didn't put a number on our heart. We don't know what to give, so we're praying over it still. That's awesome. But if God did give you um, some clarity around it, make sure you drop these off this week because you as groups are the ones who are most deeply rooted into the rhythm of devotions, of teaching, like being in worship, and then being in groups, and you're leading the way. Whether you like it or not, you're sort of the part of the tip of the spear of people leading the way into how we're doing church in a new way here in this community. So please, Pray about how you can be a part of this if you haven't yet. If you have, which I know a number of you have, man, bless you. Bless you, bless you for doing that. That is an exciting future um, for what God's doing in and through. Um, a lot of our groups, groups members who gave very generously, a lot of the people who did give were from groups because you guys are the most invested. For those who haven't yet, please feel that challenge, but thank you. Thank you for what you're doing and the way you're living into uh, the call of the Foundry Church to be faithful in your time, in your treasure, and in your talent. Have a great week at work or at play if you're going on a weird mid-October vacation. Now I kind of want to go on vacation, but I'm not. Have a great week. Work. Whatever you're doing, may it be blessed. And thank you for your continued prayer and support of the ministry here at the Foundry. Music.